Welcome back, everybody. This is Mr. Paredes, and today's assignment is Module 8, Lesson 3, Apply Two-Step Inequalities to Solve Problems. This is in our 7th grade Into Math Workbook, page 279 to 286. The assignment that we're going over in particular, the Step It Out assignment, is on pages 279 through 281. So let's go ahead and look at our first task. A population study was performed to find the number of deer in two parks. The study found that twice the number of deer in Maple Park is at least 20 more than the number of deer in Smith Park. The study found that there are 50 deer in Smith Park. Part A. Write an expression to represent the difference between twice the number of deer in Maple Park and the number of deer in Smith Park. Use X for the number of deer in Maple Park. So we're going to use X for Maple Park. And it says it's twice the number, right? We're finding and we're finding the difference of twice the number in Maple Park and the amount that was in Smith Park. Smith Park had 50 deer. So 2x minus 50. Part B. What do you know is true about this difference? Well, one of the things they mentioned was it was at least 20 more. Right? At least 20 more than. So the difference is greater greater than or equal to 20. Remember that term, at least, right? So that means they don't want anything less than 20 or it can't be anything less. It has to be, at minimum, 20. So it could be equal to 20, but it could be more or greater than. Part C, write and solve the inequality to determine the possible number of deer in Maple Park. So here we're just using the expression that we made 2x minus 50 is greater than or equal to 20. Okay. And just like we would do with the regular e equation, you know, even without the inequality sign, I have 2x minus 50. I'm going to use my inverse operations. All right. So they're subtracting 50. So in order to move it to the other side, I want to add 50 to both sides right? So when I add these together, the 50s are going to cancel on the left side. So I just have 2x is greater than or equal to, and I'm going to add 20 and 50, and that's going to give me 70. So now I still need to get rid of that 2 that's next to the x. It's 2 times x, so the inverse would be division. And we're going to divide both sides by 2. So on the left side, 2 divided by 2 is just 1. So we just have x by itself. And 70 divided by 2 is 35. So that means my inequality is x is greater than or equal to 35. Now looking at part D... It says, graph the solution of the inequality. Do all the values make sense? Well, it's greater than or equal to, and we're, we're at 35. So I'm going to put my closed circle on 35 because it could be 35. And it's greater than. So we're going to go to the right. Now, do all the values make sense? Well, it's 35 or bigger, um, and, and technically it's no, and it's because only the whole numbers work. Because we can't have 35 and one half deer, right? It has to be a whole number.
So only the whole numbers make sense. In this situation. Part E. What does the solution of the inequality represent in the problem? Well, in Maple Park, there are at least 35 deer. Because it is greater than or equal to. So the minimum number there can be is 35. Task 2. Rosina and Asia collect stamps. The number of stamps Rosina has is seven more than three times the number of stamps Asia has. Rosina has less than 85 stamps. How many stamps can Asia have? Part A. Asia has X stamps. Write an expression to represent how many stamps Rosina has. So, Looking at the information given to us in the scenario, it's seven more than three times the number of stamps that Asia has, right? So I know I'm adding seven to three times the amount that Asia has, which is X. So our expression is three X plus seven. Part B, what do you know about the number of stamps Rosina has in her collection? Well, it says she has less than 85 stamps, right? So, less than 85. Part C, write and solve an inequality to find the number of stamps Asia has in her collection. So we're just using what we had in part A and part B. So 3x plus 7 is less than 85. Now, to solve this inequality, we're going to use our inverse operations so we can isolate the variable, which is x. Basically, get it by itself. So I'm going to subtract 7 to both sides. That's going to leave me with just 3x on the left and 78 on the right. So 3x is less than 78. Now from here, I need to get rid of the 3 next to the x. 3x is being multiplied together, the 3 and x. So I'm going to do the inverse, which is division. The opposite of multiplication is division. So 3 divided by 3 is just 1, and it leaves us with x on the left. 78 divided by 3 leaves us with 26. So that means x is less than 26. Part D. Graph the solution of the inequality. Do all the values make sense? Explain. Well, I know I'm going to have my point at 26. And this one's going to be open because it's less than, it's not equal to, it's just less than. And since it's less than, we're gonna go to the left. Now, does it make sense or do all the values make sense? Just like task one, no, because only the whole numbers make sense in this situation. Right, because we're not going to have 25.2 stamps, right? It's only whole numbers. Part E, what does the solution of the inequality represent in the problem? The number of stamps that Asia has is less than 26. 
Task 3. Solve the inequality. Negative 3b minus 2 is less than or equal to 13. Part A. We're just going to solve this for b, right? We want to get b all by itself. So I need to move this negative 2 first. I want to get rid of that. And to do that, I'm going to add negative or add to to both sides because we're doing the inverse operation. So we add it to both sides and it cancels. So now I just have negative 3b is less than or equal to 15 because I add it on the right side. Now from here, I'm going to divide by negative 3 because I want b all by itself. And I do it to both sides. 15 divided by negative 3 is negative 5. Now, if you notice, this inequality ended up flipping, right? It was less than or equal to to start out. And then the last two show greater than or equal to. The reason this flipped is because we divide it by a negative number. Okay, whenever you divide or multiply both sides by a negative number, it flips that inequality, just like we learned in lesson or module eight, lesson one. Okay, so we have B is greater than or equal to negative five. Part B, they want us to graph the, the solution of the inequality. So I know I'm going to start at negative five. And because it's greater than or equal to, it has that equal to, I'm going to close this circle because it includes negative five. And it's greater than negative five. So that means I want to go to the right. So it's going to be all values greater than or equal to negative five. Task four, Monica and Lucy are participating in a scavenger hunt. The number of items Monica found is seven more than one half the number of items Lucy found. The number of items Monica found is at least 17. Part A, Lucy found X items. Write an expression to represent how many items Monica found. Then complete the sentence about the number of items. So I know Monica found seven more than one half of the number Lucy found. So kind of like we did with the previous or task two, I know it's going to be plus seven and it's one half of the number, which is X. Okay. And this is the same as saying X over two, right? Half of that number. It's the same thing. I'm just writing it as one half times X. So there's our expression. And the number of items Monica found is at least, right? So at minimum, 17. So that means it's going to be greater than or equal to 17. Part B, write and solve the inequality to find what you know about the number of items Lucy found. So we have our inequality and we're just going to try to get X all by itself, right? So I'm going to subtract seven to both sides because we want to move that positive seven. The sevens will cancel. I have one half X is greater than 10. So from here, I want to get rid of that one half. Now, when you have a fraction 
in front of your variable and you're going to move it, we want to multiply by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 2 over, or 1 over 2 is 2 over 1. And I still have 10 here, right? And if you think about it, we're doing the opposite of multiplying by 1 and doing the opposite of dividing by 2, right? By multiplying by 2 and dividing by 1, which is, again, the reciprocal. So now on the right side, I'm going to have 10 times 2 over 1 or just 10 times 2, and that's going to give me 20. So x is greater than or equal to 20. Part C, graph the solution and do all the values make sense? Well, I know I'm going to start at 20 or put my circle at 20 and it's greater than or equal to. So that means I'm going to have a closed circle. Remember, it's only open if it's greater than or less than, all right? Not equal. And it's greater, so we're going to go to the right because it's going to get bigger. It's all the numbers bigger than 20, and it could be 20. And again, like before, does it make sense in this situation? No, because we're just dealing with whole numbers. So I'm just going to write only whole numbers make sense. And you might want to have in this situation, but given the space right here and time, I'm just going to put only whole numbers make sense, but it's meaning in this situation. Part D, what does the solution of the inequality mean in the problem? Well, it means Lucy found greater than or equal to 20 items. Okay, and that's it. That's all it is. All right, everyone, so that's it for Module 8, Lesson 3. I hope the video was helpful and informative, and I hope you enjoyed it. If so, click like. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. That way you're getting notifications for any new content that I post. All right, don't forget to complete and submit your work. And as always, you guys, take care.